Hi guys. I'm just making all that noise. Uh, it is another wet bulb temperature here in the collapse of everything at Bugs in a Jar Farm and the Finger Lakes of New York where they are claiming it is 84 degrees. If, you know, if this is 84 degrees, this right here is a uh, is a pit bull. Uh, 84 degrees, my ass. It's fucking miserable here on. It is Sunday, July 7th, 2024. So I am now about 78 hours into my doom scrolling hiatus and uh, I just had the another cancellation where yet another person <coughs> has canceled their Airbnb reservation so uh, I am just driving around in the air conditioning in my gas sucking truck driving around just sitting in front of the air conditioner dying of wet bulb temperatures so anyway guys I uh, I know some of you I know Tennessee Jed has already uh, complained that uh, I promised my long-awaited book hermit rant last night and I never delivered well uh, as I told Tennessee Jed, I actually started uh, my book hermit rant last night at 11 o'clock on a Saturday night and uh, but as soon as I started entering book hermit's head I I felt kind of like the guy who ate the brown acid at Woodstock and things started getting pretty weird so I gave up and slept on it so uh, instead of doing a book hermit rant because uh, it's and, and, and once again I want to let you know that I have invited book hermit to appear on the show and once again he is politely is the word demurred is that how you pronounce that word anyway he's not coming on the show and it, it, guys you can read book hermits comment comments as well as me and decide what you want to do with them <clears throat> so I am actually uh, book hermit can speak for himself I'm not gonna try to pretend like that I that I can speak for book hermit he's a grown man he can speak for himself but uh, I, I I'm just going to use years of listening to his comments just, just I'm, I'm gonna make two different rants out of it so this is kind of uh, part one of my uh, bad acid trip into uh, into the mind of book hermit and we're gonna start with what book hermit the rant number one is <clears throat> I, I'm gonna have a friendly debate with Book Hermit about things that I don't agree with him on and uh, then we're gonna segue and, and I'm gonna make a second rant <coughs> about what I think that Book Hermit's trying to say about why we need more global warming uh, why we need more global warming not less and uh, where I if I'm understanding him correctly it is an interesting uh, an interesting theory but first let's get on to the the, the, the parts that I uh, I disagree with book hermit on and and I, I really don't want to insult my own intelligence and yours, uh, but I, I, I think Book Hermit, I think, uh, has at least intimated, if not stated outright, 
that the Heartland Institute, the Heartland Institute and their ilk uh, are every bit as legitimate of a climate change information site as, I don't know, the IPCC or uh, the uh, or Elliot Jacobson's uh, Climate Casino or all the other ones. And, 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 and it really hurts me to hear somebody as intelligent as Book Hermit uh, making a comment that the Heartland Institute and, and all their related ilk uh, are, are, are some sort of objective form of science. Uh, I guess Book Hermit does not understand that there is a very dedicated uh, disinformation, uh, certainly misinformation, crossing the line into disinformation, propaganda uh, machine being paid for by the fossil fuel uh, industry to discredit uh, climate science and the Heartland Institute and these whoever those jackasses like Willie Soon and Lord Moncton and whoever else they have on there uh, for it, 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 it anyway I've got no fucking time for it uh, the well, that was a very pleasant view on this hot day uh, the the Heartland Institute it is unadulterated horseshit anything you read on the Heartland Institute is fossil fuel funded misinformation disinformation propaganda to confuse people so I, I, I want to make that clear right now I do not listen to one word the Heartland Institute has to say about anything and uh, then the bigger thing of course is the question of we're, we're, we're going to get into the actual global warming the global heating uh, caused by uh, increased carbon emissions in, in rant number two we're going to talk more about that but I but uh, Book Hermit just left a comment last week, I think, uh, and it had 10 thumbs up. Ten th so Book Hermit is not the only one on this channel. He, he's the only one with the balls to say it uh, on this channel that the increase in carbon dioxide uh, in this planet's atmosphere is what did he say is a good thing is a good thing for I think he said for the planet's ecology and the plants that live on it and as I say he got 10 thumbs up and uh, th this is just my view I don't know what book hermits you know, formal education in in botany and biology and whatnot. I've taken some botany courses in uh, in advanced biology in college and made A's on all of them. Uh, I have been uh, you know an organic gardener uh, for 20 years of my life have, and and know a little bit more about plants than uh, than uh, some people. I, don't, I honestly don't know if I know more about plants than Book Hermit does. So this is a very good road that I uh, that I chose to come down. This uh, will, will help illustrate what I'm talking about. So based purely on that fact is carbon dioxide good for plants I do agree with Book Hermit and the Heartland Institute that just taking one single variable into the equation 
carbon dioxide by and large is good for plants well I, you know i mean in the levels we're talking about uh, obviously there you, you know what i'm saying there's an upper limit but in, in, in the levels where are we at 427 parts per million uh, i think good plants uh if they were living isolated in a greenhouse unlike for instance this group of ash trees the, the here is an example of uh, an ash tree in New York, uh, how well it is being uh, being helped by what's going on uh, on the planet. Uh, so, you know, if if you, if if you had two greenhouses sitting side by side, you had two greenhouses, everything else was the same. These, you, you know, these temperature controlled humidity controlled uh, soil moisture content controlled obviously uh, pest controlled and not sitting in the path of a wildfire so you have two completely identical uh, greenhouses right next to each other <clears throat> full of you know full of different kinds of plants all other variables, namely temperature and soil moisture, uh, being identical in their sweet spot. And you pumped, and, and one of them had 290 parts per million carbon dioxide, and the other greenhouse, you pumped it up to 427 uh, parts per million carbon dioxide and you came back three months later and took your measurements with keeping every other variable constant my guess is that book hermit is right it is I, I'm not going to do this experiment my guess is the the greenhouse with the 427 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the same temperature, same soil moisture, same exposure to pests, everything else would be good. You would have more plant growth by weight than in the control that did, you know, that set at 290 parts per million. I am not arguing that. It would surprise me if that did not happen as we drive past these groves of, uh, of dead ash trees. Okay, I'm not arguing that. What I am arguing that I, I don't think maybe Book Hermit and the people at the Heartland Institute either take into account or they don't want to talk about is everything else that the you know the increased uh, carbon dioxide emissions create and uh, number one on the list being heat they uh, it, it, obviously it ramps up the heat uh, the more uh, carbon in the air the hotter it gets and uh, so first and foremost you, you just have simple heat stress now I don't think it's heat stress you know that that are taking out hundreds of millions of ash trees all over the uh, the 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 state of New York but a, a lot of uh, there, there are a shitload of plants uh, on, on this planet uh, that are already in trouble purely because of the heat stress okay and uh, due to the uh, due to the uh, rising carbon dioxide levels, to the extent that they are taking, uh, they're taking the, uh, the 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 heat up. So if if you took the same greenhouse and you made one greenhouse 
you, you know, uh, 5C degrees hotter than the control group, you would, uh, you see what I'm saying? You, you, you would start to see a problem uh, forming. And then the corollary to that, uh, as I am finding out, anyone who has tried to raise a, uh, to raise a garden uh, in, in a, in, you know, in a heat wave and a drought is soil moisture. So to the extent that rising global carbon emissions are drying out soils, uh, you know, thanks to those increased carbon emissions, the drier uh, the, the more droughts that brings on and the drier the soil, the more dead plants. So now in your second greenhouse, you, you take the carbon to 427 and you, uh, from 290 to 427, you, you get a little bit of growth. Then you add uh, 5C of sweet spot temperature to the second greenhouse and then you reduce the soil moisture variable in your second greenhouse to reflect a, you know drought conditions and, and, and take a wild guess what's going to start happening to your plants that, uh, that loved all this extra CO2 and then of course and, and this is what's true at least for most of the trees in New York and, uh, and, and uh, millions and millions of acres of, uh, of forest all over the Rocky Mountains. <clears throat> this is the emerald ash borer that uh, is uh, killing every single ash tree. In, in New York, we can say the same about the thing with the hemlocks. And so to the extent that the global warming uh, being produced by the, ex the excess carbon emissions uh, are allowing more insect pests, and this is uh, really true of those pine bark beetles that now thanks to global warming thanks to increased carbon emissions the pine bark beetles have two complete life cycles where the tree could deal with one but thanks to global warming thanks to the increased carbon emissions that book hermit is claiming is so good for the planetary ecology uh, you, 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 you see the point uh, I, I, I am making here. And then, of course, we have wildfires that, uh, that uh, you, you, you know, tree, millions and millions and millions of acres of, uh, of forest all over the world, uh, from the Amazon to uh, the Arctic Circle that are literally burning to the ground uh, because of the wildfire risk that is. Uh, so I'm assuming if you burned down the, uh, your control greenhouse, if you set it on fire, the plants would not do too good. So all of the, 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 the benefit of the actual carbon fertilizing the plant is far out outweighed you know by all of the negative effects the deluge of negative effects uh, that completely overwhelm any positive effect of the carbon emissions the, 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 this is fourth grade logic that I know goddamn well uh, a, a man of, of Book Hermit's I I intelligence understands. And, uh, but, but, you know, do understand that there are going to be winners and losers 
as this planet makes you, you know a the the biggest fundamental change in the climate that we've seen on this planet uh, since the last ice age and certainly uh, in the you know in the last 10,000 years so generally since global industrial civilization well not even since the agricultural revolution when we started growing plants and figuring out what plants like and don't like uh, it is far as what modern humans uh, became used to in the uh, in in uh, I call it the Goldilocks age. What was it called? The the Holocene is that the official name of the Goldilocks age? For what modern humans for the past ten thousand years and all of us are just used to seeing as the global ecosystem you know you got your tropical rainforest in the equator and you got your uh well you did have your permafrost and now you have your uh tempafrost and your tundra at the other end that this is what we're used to and as the holocene uh collapses into the anthropocene there's going to be a shitload of losers and such as these ash trees uh, it is a prime example of the losers there is going to be a shitload of losers as uh, the heat uh, becomes intolerable uh, for these plants adapted to a very narrow range of temperature, uh, a very narrow range of soil moisture, uh, you know, that can't tolerate drought, uh, blah, blah, blah. So there's going to be a shitload of losers in the near future uh, from, from all of these negative effects of climate change from too much CO2 but there are going to be a few winners in the beginning there are going to be a few winners and with every passing year every passing decade certainly every passing century there's going to be a, you know fewer and fewer losers left on the planet because they're going to be dead and then there is and then the winners who can deal with these higher temperatures and whatnot are going to start eventually filling back in the uh, the niches I should have pointed out on those dead ash trees how you already see a, a, a new uh, you can see it right here how you can see new kinds of plants already starting with vines it's usually vines there's a lot of these dead ash trees is going to start with these vines and uh, it's going to be a good century to be a vine and then the vines you, you know and over the decades and the centuries a, a whole new uh, global ecosystem uh, which is going to look a hell of a lot different than it does today uh, it, it is going to, to develop and so uh, what we understand as a healthy global ecosystem with tropical rainforest around the equator and uh, you know boreal forest up north uh, right on up uh, to tundra which is already uh, being invaded you know by willows and things that need warmer temperatures it doesn't you don't need a PhD in botany to figure this out and uh, so what is the end result going to look like well it depends on how high the carbon emissions go and how high uh, the heat goes and how low the so you know all, all of this stuff uh, it's going to be what it's going to be and my guess and, and I don't mind saying this is if I a, <coughs> the 
notion of a hot house earth sounds good to you, it's going to be a good time uh, to be a, a plant that, that enjoys hot house earth conditions. My honest, my honest guess is if humans don't manage, you know, to destroy every single life form we uh, share this planet with, where there, you know, there's nothing left uh, to continue to evolve as long as we leave a few things behind, my guess is that uh, in a million years from now, this planet, uh, it, it, at least from a, a plant's point of view, uh, botanically, uh, botanically speaking, I honestly believe that this is going to be a much, much richer uh, it might be a less diverse uh, ecosystem than we have on the planet now and have had for the last 10 to 100,000 years. It's not going to be as diverse. It's going to the planet more and more in the, of the planet is going to look like, uh, well, what the Amazon rainforest looked like before we killed it. Uh, and, and, and things are going to shift. And my guess is what is now equatorial rainforest very well could be somewhere between savanna and desert. And uh, while bananas will be doing fine in Alaska and there will be no more polar ice caps and uh, just like the planet has dealt with it before, the planet's going to deal with it again. And it's going to be uh, not, not a bad place to live as long as you can handle, uh, y y you know, the heat and the humidity and, and, the, and all of the various biochemical changes that, that, that are going to happen. And, and I've had the rant before and, and people think that I'm joking. That the that I can't stand fucking snow and ice. I hope I never see a flake of snow. I have not seen frost on the ground in over a year. Never, there was not one frost in Denellum, Florida, the entire year. When I left Ithaca, New York, on October 30th last year, October 30th, we had never had a frost. Never had a frost. And uh, in Denali, so I have not seen a frost in, in like a year and a half, and uh, I, I hate the uh, frost. And, and, and I think there's a hell of a lot more to recommend a tropical rainforest uh, than than the fucking tundra, as far as the biodiversity uh, of the plants and the animals. And as I say, uh, I mean, of course, humans are going to be long gone. Uh, humans are not going to be around to witness this because, it, and this is going to be the subject of part two of this rant, uh, so this will be my segue into this, is of course humans are not going to be around to appreciate the new winners of the game uh, because we are going to be extinct when we hit a certain uh, temperature threshold ourselves. And so this is going to be the subject of my next rant where I think what Book Hermit is talking about, the reason we need more global uh, more global heating is good for the planet because there's a certain temperature threshold which we're not that far away from which will spell the end of global industrial civilization. So we, I, and, and so I think what he's saying we at least need to get the heat up enough to uh, destroy global industrial civilization. That that's a good start, and I think that's where a book hermit uh, stops because he never thinks 
that we're going to uh, get it hot enough on this planet to make humans go extinct, that will get it up hot enough to make global industrial civilization collapse and then the planet can start recovering and once global industrial civilization collapses the temperatures will start coming down but he uh, thinks there will all well not always you, you, you know uh, but you know uh, but that there's going to be a few pockets of post-apocalypse humans remaining on the planet. That remains to be seen. But anyway, I'm already getting into the second half of the rant. So we're going to come out. But first, I need to get a German chocolate cake ice cream cone. Once I uh, get a German chocolate cake ice cream cone uh, in my mouth and in my stomach, I will come back with the second part of this is more global warming uh, a good thing for this planet? And uh, and my answer is yes. The ultimate answer is yes. I agree with Book Hermit if that's what he thinks. But we'll come back and talk about this in a minute because I have a German chocolate cake ice cream cone with my name on it. And I'm going to enjoy, while I still can, enjoy things like German chocolate cake ice cream cones. Bye, guys.